Ms. Lang, good afternoon. Hello. Nice to have you here in Melbourne. Nice to have you at Hamer Hall. Thank you. I can't wait to see it. I'm about <laughs> to go in for the first time. Yes, we're going to have a tour together. Uh, you were last here in 2008? Yes, with Mr. Bennett. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, ironically, and then you came back in 2010. You filled in for Susan Boyle when she couldn't make the Logies. That's right. That's true. And two Logies later this year, you wouldn't know this, Tony Bennett. Tony, I knew that Tony was here, actually. Not only did he sing here, but he, was, he spent most of his time raving about you. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> we, we kind of have a love affair, Tony and I, yeah. Well, that, that is true. This, that duet thing, am I right in saying it all started back with Natalie Cole, and she did the, the one with her dead father, with Nat King Cole, and got some controversy over it. And since then, we've had duets sort of, it's now a very popular form of, um, of entertainment. Um, I, people I, I, for her? I, no, I have no idea whether or not it has anything to do with Natalie Cole. I think it's more of a marketing thing. I think, you know, they're trying everything they can to, yeah. <laughs> to sell records. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, well, you, but you did it with Roy Orbison, with Crying. I did, yeah. But that was for a movie, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. And then it won you a lot of awards afterwards. Yeah, won a Grammy. Uh huh. Yeah. I have a Crying story to talk to you about later on. Okay. I want to do it at the very end because right. I don't want you to walk out on me. Uh, <laughs> Now, speaking of, the, of 2008, that was the Olympic Games. We've got the Olympic Games on starting this week in London. You went off to Canberra then because you were uh, campaigning on the free, to, free Tibet issue, mm -hmm, right. uh, which obviously you're very passionate about. Yeah. Well, I'm a practicing Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist. So, yeah, the, the protection of the Buddhist culture and the Tibetan culture is very important to me. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of atrocities in terms of civil rights and human rights. Um, in Tibet, and uh, China is a very, very strong figure in the world, the world stage. So it's a very hard, hard uh, beast to tackle. I was doing a TV show back in the early '90s, and uh, we had footage of the of the the monks in their saffron robes being gunned down and beaten mm. by the Chinese guards, mm. and and the world. Well, from day one, the, the reason why China got Tibet was that after the war, they were sick of wars. The world couldn't handle another war, and so Tibet was really left to its own devices, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was, and it was it was genocide. And, uh, you know, it's it's just sad, but, you know, the Tibetan people are, are, a, are a culture that's based in compassion and, mm -hmm. and peacefulness, and, you know, they just were no match. And, uh, and yeah, never will be. Never will be, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I've interviewed... The Dalai Lama three times mm -hmm. over the past 20 years and last time I talked to him um, it hit me it's very sad because he will never he, he's optimistic as he always is he giggles all the time as you know mm -hmm. uh, you look at him you think you will and I've asked him this you'll never see your homeland again and he never will he may never yeah. but he can't he made a commitment to the Tibetan people he will never stop trying you know mm -hmm. he, that's they're very proud and very determined people, the Tibetans, and he will never stop trying. Yeah. Does it does it worry you that uh, because of the Chinese influence, that he may be the last Dalai Lama? Because the the one they've got, yeah, parked away there yeah. is, 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 a, yeah. is a phony. So. Yeah, it is a phony. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I hope not. I hope not. I mean, I think um, I, I, it's hard to say. I have no idea what's going to happen political politically with Tibet after uh, His Holiness passes and. Um, you know, I hope that's not for a long time, but it's inevitable, and I just uh, I hope that um, the world will see Tibet as a as a, a, a as a treasure in terms of heritage, you know, ancient heritage, world heritage, and protect it because it is it's a it's an amazing culture. Well, there's probably a file on you in China. Have you have you ever there is. there? I I did before I got banned, but now I I now I banned. I am yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny, they, say, they, they get scared of musicians, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, ever since I kind of stomped around Canberra, I, I, I can't go anymore. But it, it is a beautiful country, and I, I love the people. It's a wonderful country. Yeah. All right, we should talk music, I mean, uh, I, I guess. Going back to the duets, you and Tony Bennett. I mean, Frank Sinatra said once that Tony Bennett has the best voice in the world. I think he, he didn't use those words, but it's the perfect voice. For a male voice, would that be about right? Tony's a really great singer, and he's he's been singing um, consistently well for many, 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 many years. I think 60 years, over 60 years. So to have that kind of um, 
longevity in terms of sustaining the voice quality is is just very rare and um, is a testament to the fact that he is singing technically um, well and um, not harming his voice and doing it with love and you know Tony's just he he delivers it you know his phrasing and his narrative and his 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 joy the way he sings is just it's just uh you know that's so old school and he's just one of the the, the last great singers does know? it scare you as a singer that one day you may lose it not everybody keeps the voice as long as, as he has oh yeah yeah I'm scared but I, you know I also understand that it's not mine to ha to own and so you know if if that should happen I'll be sad but I'll find something so else. Will you, so will your fans. I, uh, because I mentioned because the, they had the Diamond Jubilee concert for uh, the Queen and uh, and Paul McCartney, maybe it was a bad day, but Paul McCartney, Elton John, there were some notes there they didn't get anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's understandable. I mean, you've been doing it for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's just the muscle. It's going to go <laughs> away. <laughs> I think a lot of your fans will be, will be disappointed to hear you refer to that quality as a muscle but it is you're right well the 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 one that goes away i don't think the the sort of the the intellect and the and the emotional and the you know spiritual nature of the voice goes away but i think obviously the the muscular aspect of it goes away yeah you it's hard to pinpoint you and you don't want to be pinpointed you know, pigeonholed either because when you look at you you work with Leonard Cohen, you've you've sung with everybody. You've um, I mean, you started out with the Reclines, <laughs> with a, a Patsy Cline country western tribute group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what your, I think your first Grammy was for country western, wasn't it? Or, yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. And was that your was that obviously your that was your passion when you were young, Patsy Cline, Brenda Lee, people like that. Yeah, and I still you know I still love it. I, to me, I don't see, you know, I don't see any. I don't make differential choices between genres really I just I sing what I like and I um you know I just I I don't want to be pigeonholed because I'm not pigeon I don't pigeonhole myself no. as a listener so I wouldn't want to do it as a singer yeah, which makes you even more fascinating <laughs> <laughs> it does all right we're gonna take a break we're talking with Katie Lang 